All right, welcome back everybody. I'm going to continue on with this 66-inch uh, Nautilus build. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm continuing on working on some of the lower hull details. Uh, I've got uh, the ice cream cones glued in place uh, on the lower section. I actually broke off some of the piping detail that was originally cast in. There were some air bubbles and I uh, replaced it with some bent brass rod, uh, added a few bends and curves just to add a little bit of visual interest. Um, <clears throat> this section has all been glued in, the, the uh, spiral speed indicator. What I've done for the uh, anchor is I've inserted a 1 16th brass rod into the tip, uh, drilled a receptacle into the um, anchor area here and that just basically presses in place. You can see that fits nicely and that will make sure it doesn't fall out or get broken out. But uh, what I wanted to show you was some scoop detail. As they uh, come from the kit, these are all sort of a solid piece and uh, I can show you one right here. So, I mean, it certainly does give you the idea of the detail, but it's not super realistic if you were to look closely. So I'm just going to take it a little bit further. I've hollowed this out with uh, my Dremel tool. Now what I want to do is create an opening in the hull so that when you look forward, you actually see a scoop going in. So what I've done is I've marked out the uh, place that I'm going to be cutting in. I'm going to use a diamond cutting wheel on my Dremel tool. I'm going to cut this section, bend it inwards, and uh, we'll see if we can get this thing looking like an intake. Alright, here is the final scoop. Uh, with the black in there you can't really see uh, very well, but I'll try and get a light in. Well, that doesn't help very much either, but at any rate, you can see if you were here in person, that <laughs> the uh, scoop actually goes into the model. Uh, and once I get some uh, you know, lighter colored paints on there, uh, certainly you'll be able to see that. Now I'm working on the back scoop, um, which is something that's a little bit more visible here as well. Uh, and I did the same thing uh, with this rear scoop that I did with the front one in that I hollowed out the um, scoop with my Dremel tool. This is going to go uh, along the back edge here. Um, but then what I'm going to do, just to, again to add some visual interest, is I've got some brass tubing. I'm going to insert this into the uh, hole that I just created. And what that's going to create is a, is a scoop. Once I get this cut properly, nice and flush, um, you'll actually see a big intake uh, for whatever purpose that serves on the model. All right, I think I've got the lower details uh, all in place. I've got some very fresh primer on there. You can see I've got a, a bit of a gleam that'll, of course, go away when the primer dries. Uh, that's the finished rear intake scoop. I think it turned out really, really well. And since we're on the back here, I want to show you what I've done with the rudder. As you can see, uh, it is fully actuating. However, as I said, I need to split the upper and lower hull and I really hate trying to get the orienting pins uh, all lined up because they'll bind and such. Um, not a big deal, but uh, what I actually wanted to do uh, was gain better access to the propeller as well to take that on and off. So uh, as you can see here, uh, it's currently attached, it's movable, um, and now it's not. So what this actually is, uh, is a series of magnets. And you can see in the bottom of the rudder I've got some uh, flat disc magnets. And then in the bottom of the keel here you can see I've got some uh, other magnets. So basically all I need to do is put it in place. It clicks perfectly aligned. I think it worked out really slick and it's something I'm going to be looking to do probably in uh, my other models just to um, gain better access and more convenient access uh, to the interior without having to line up pins. Alright, let's uh, take a look at where I'm at right now. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the outer hull is pretty well finished. Uh, all of the um, deck grating has been installed. I've primed everything. I added some ladder rungs uh, to the front here just for some visual interest. And this was actually uh, part of the deck set 
uh, of the movie. Uh, I think obviously it makes a lot of sense. If someone were to need to swim uh, up to the model or up to the, the submarine, you'd have a way to get in. Um, moving around the side here, you can see I uh, replaced this front intake uh, again with some brass. Just a little bit more visual interest in there, a little bit more realism. And of course, that's a tube that goes right into the model. Uh, on the lower hull, you can see the detail pieces. Um, I have actually got a lot of work done on the salon interior. Uh, as you can see, I've got the uh, lights in operation inside. Uh, I've got the detail pieces almost finished uh, on the inside. And take a quick look at this lower hatch here. You can see uh, or perhaps you can see right on the on the front edge there there's a little bit of a, of a round cylinder and uh, what that is is um, I've actually got a light that'll shine down from the dive chamber there so I've got a magnetic catch uh, and that'll just basically hold it closed uh, and then the owner can open it up and the, the light will stream through so that's kind of a neat feature there as well um, what I have also done is I've used my 3D printer to print up some more internal walls. Uh, you can see this is the uh, wall for the rear port side and uh, these are two picture frames that are on that section there. So I've got the wall printed up in three sections. I've just got to uh, highlight that a bit and print out some pictures, some artwork to go inside the frames and then mount it uh, inside. These are the uh, books for the uh, other wall, uh, this was 3D printed as well. Uh, the 3D printer is, is a great tool I'm finding. I'm, I'm absolutely a novice at it, but uh, it allows me to create parts really, really quickly um, compared to doing it by hand. Uh, you can see this is my setup here. I'm printing out uh, an inner iris section and uh, here you can see it getting printed out on the 3D printer. Like I said, it's a, it's a great tool and I'm absolutely a novice, but uh, really helpful at uh, getting more precise parts done faster. So really it's, it's a game changer in the modeling industry. I think it's going to be uh, a lot of fun to see what the future brings. So. That's where I'm at uh, right now. I think what I'll do, I'll pop the top off and uh, show you how the salon is looking. All right, here you can see the um, salon module, uh, certainly nearing completion. I uh, really like the way that the organ turned out. It got the uh, brass chains there and the, and the stanchions uh, are all in place. It's really hard to see you know, once the model's buttoned up, but of course uh, you'll know it's there and you can catch glimpses of it if you really press your face up. Got warm white uh, LEDs. Uh, looks like I've got actually uh, six of them that light up the interior of the salon. And uh, they're scattered so that the front settee area, the specimen table, and the organ get the majority of the light. Uh, again, these are going to be the, the bookshelves that go in this section. And the last thing I'll show you is just the, uh, the beginnings of the uh, display stand. This is the stock custom replicas display stand. I've started to uh, assemble it. Um, these tend to be quite warped. So uh, again, heat gun is going to be your friend. Warm everything up. Use a flat surface. Um, then what I did is I actually put a uh, flat piece of plastic over the top and weighted it down with some spray cans and let it cool so that everything is nice and true. Uh, flat and flush. So continuing work on that. Uh, I'm going to need to route power from the display stand into the model. Um, so I'm going to be working on those uh, details and that interface as well. All right, let's continue on here. I just wanted to show you what I did for securing the salon module inside the lower hull. Uh, I've glued these aluminum brackets uh, into the hull. I made some corresponding brackets to the uh, salon module and uh, basically what it is is just a, a single bolt that threads in on this side and another one again on this side and that secures it extremely well inside the hull. 
Um, not entirely sure what we're going to be doing in regard to shipping, but uh, you know we want to make sure that this thing doesn't rattle around inside. So everything is uh, good and secure inside. That's the completed salon module inside there as you can see. So my next step is actually going to be uh, starting to work on the wiring and getting the wiring uh, integrated into the display stand. Alright, we are uh, moving right along here. I've started wiring in the control wires for the model. Uh, I'm using Cat5 cable and uh, with the controls that we're putting in here I needed three runs of them. You can see that I'm uh, very carefully extracting the uh, two-way switches that I had installed previously for the iris and for the hatches and I'm uh, cross-referencing them over to the cables. Um, after I get them all in place, I'll tuck them down nicely. I'm going to use a little bit of this uh, pipe insulation foam to uh, press those down into the keel so that everything is nice and tidy. They're going to be a, a remote controlled box that's going to be um, you know, located away from the model, but this will run through the display stand um, into the base and then from there out to the um, control box that I will be fabricating shortly as well.